Hi, this is Kimberly. Um, <clears throat> today I'm going to show you guys how I make candles. Uh, I figured in the bottom I would try to entertain y'all. Uh, this candle here is going to be red, white, and blue. Uh, I do start off with like core like this. I make this um, in a mold and then I put a wick through it and then I dip it 25 to 30 times. So, kind of knew it doing the video thing, but. I do have to soak it in wax to soften the core on it. And then I'm going to add its color. So hopefully this will entertain you. <laughs> what I'm dipping this in is uh, 180 degrees wax. And I'm going to start with red because I want to make this kind of red, white, and blue. So I'm going to start off with red. It'll be probably like 10 layers of red on it. Every time you add a layer to the candle, it just makes another uh, thickness to it, and then I'll pour it back through that, and the candle is ready to be cut. Every time you add layers to the candle, it does get darker, so I'm going to add some clear wax in here, just so that it doesn't darken that red too much to where it doesn't look nice. Just goes from wax to water. So this here is like 180 degrees, and then to my right over here is water. The water is just at room temperature. It doesn't need anything fancy to cool it. It just stays at room temperature. Now, if I were to make a lot of candles, I would have to, of course, change the water so that it wasn't too hot. My wax, my wax right here holds like 12 colors, but I mix and match colors, so I can just about make any color you could ever imagine by mixing the colors together. Put white in between the layers. I'm going to do the white a little thicker since this is a red, white, and blue candle. <laughs> um, but you do use white to separate all of your layers as well, just because it makes the colors stand out. So if you don't put white between your colors, then it just kind of combines and becomes one color. So it's really important if you want two defined colors that you uh, place white between them. So all these colors here are like translucent, so it's just clear wax with dyes, and then the white has opaque in it, so it, it's um, a little bit thicker and not as transparent. Start putting some blue on there. Now this blue is not exactly the blue that I want. I want it a little bit darker because it kind of has like a purple look to it. So I would just add black to it. I add the black. Every time I add an additional layer to it, it's going to make it look like um, I wanted to do red, white, and blue camel just because, you know, Right now, I think it's really important for all of this to stay strong and remember, you know, the red, white, and blue will prevail. Always, nobody should give up hope with the things that are happening right now. We have amazing people, strong people in this country, so. Going to add some more clear on the outside. I always like to finish it with clear because I mean, unless it's a color, it's a color I want to finish it with clear. But with white, I like it to look very white. All right, this is one that I made just a few moments ago. Set that off to the side, and I'm going to carve this one for y'all to see. All right, so this candle that I'm going to make here is going to be called a basket bow. Um, there's many different designs that I can do on candles. Um, probably just about anything you can imagine I can make a candle for. Uh, this one here is, like I said, red, white, and blue, and it's going to be a basket bow. Uh, for the next 15 days, I'm going to do live videos to try to do my best to entertain people. Um, I will be showing you all kinds of different things that I do with candles, which are really cool. Um, so I start off with a regular knife. I don't need anything fancy or sharp. And I've been making candles about 26 years, so I've been doing this since I was 17. Um, I'm going to start carving back to the core 
which is that base that I started with in the beginning. And as I carve back, my colors come out. See that strike? Uh, this is one of my favorite designs that I do. You see some of the red start to come out. Now, before I get the candle ready, uh, sometimes, you know, if I like something better or if I'm adding a theme, for the most part, you should kind of know what you're doing beforehand. Um, you only have about five minutes for the wax gets really cold. And uh, once it gets cold, it's brittle, so it snaps. At this point, it's still very pliable, so you can do a whole lot of things with it, stretching, pulling, cutting. Um, I'm just basically slicing, making a candle though, the better it will glow because it's making um, holes for light to shine through when it's lit because I want it to reflect the bow. This is the bottom layer for my bow. Any of you guys uh, that's been following me for a long time remember me carving candles back in the day at Old Town. It was where I carved candles for. 13 years, so I met a lot of people from around the world. Nowadays, I only carve candles every now and again. I work for a uh, nonprofit that I love, so I figured um, you know, I might as well get back to my roots and make some candles. Candles have uh, been around the world for a long time throughout history, and uh, to this day, I still see the importance of them, uh, especially when you know, giving them one of my favorite things to do is uh, memory candles. I love doing that. You know, I put the photographs and things and messages or wedding candles are great so some of the candles i've made for people are really special and everyone i usually make their favorite. i get a lot of tears when i give away candles as well which is one of my favorite parts this here is a uh, the wax is still pliable where I can twist it. So I changed, I did change tools. I forgot to mention that. Um, I changed it to a potter stick. A lot of the same tools that I use are used for doing pottery, uh, which is another uh, molding thing that I just recently picked up and love. Um, but it's given me a lot of ideas for things I can do with the candles as well, or make with the candles or clean them. But a lot of the tools are the same kind of tools that they use for that. Now, as far as the knife, it always amazes me still that it's just a regular paring knife, but I do have a favorite brand, so, um, you know, I won't carve with any other kind of knife except for this kind. Uh, I'm going to cut the bottom off, and I make all kinds of stuff out of the bottoms. I try never to waste anything, so, um, like, I'll make a mushroom, but I'll cut this stuff up and make all kinds of different designs, kind of like the Geos. Um, I make floating candles out of them, uh, <clears throat> drip sticks. Keanu bottles kind of stuff like this. Better to always find a purpose for scraps. So I make a little mushroom. Let's push that down. And it's a candle too, so it does need a wick. So I'll slice the wick down the center of this. And I also use uh, scrap wax from that. Or wick, I mean. All right. And then this candle here, you know, once it dries, it would come apart if I didn't seal it again. So what we do is we place it in um, a glaze or into clear wax first and then into a glaze. So the clear wax will just melt everything back together. And I don't dip it into the water. I go ahead and dip it into the glaze that I have over here. This is what makes it shine. It also protects it from melting, like in regular temperatures. So that was my show of how to do a red white and blue candle um you guys all take care and looking forward to presenting you guys a video every day um i try to make different fun things to get up some ideas and have some uh things that i'll be showing you the next couple days that you can do at home yourself without having a elaborate tank like i have um thank you for watching thank you